Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to another Nomad game. Uh, majority of games in age, you have a TC. Nomad, you do not. You guys probably know this. Uh, this particular game was submitted to me, and it's a nine villager start, which is different than standard games. Uh, but it does speed up things a little bit. I actually think it makes the game a little bit easier to play as well. Especially with Nomad, because as Red, for example, tries to wander over here to find or, or to build the TC, there's more villagers, and so basically more scouts are finding more resources. So uh, Red's going to find the boar, Red's going to see the deer, Red's got the gold nearby, Red's got the sheep, everything looking pretty good. So you might be thinking to yourself, uh, these are some different names. I don't see these names around a lot. Uh, these are actually really solid players. Ween Dinchester is a player who's around 2100 rank. Maybe scratch the, the 2200 elo mark. I think if you're 2k1, you are top 200 in the world. I think if you're 2k plus, you're top like 300, 350. So uh, everyone's got a different category of pro. Uh, some people say you've got to earn some money from the game. Other people say... You know, maybe the 2k3 mark but i think being in the top couple hundred is pretty darn freaking good and i've seen ween dinchester around for uh particularly this year doing really well i think maybe a player from germany but i'm not i'm not sure uh ween is playing as the koreans now remember i said you get a lot of scouting intel with the nine villager start and it makes life a lot easier well koreans get more vision on their villagers so uh, look at how much scouting has happened here for blue uh, Blue did actually lose a sheep over here. A big thing on Nomad is scouting around with sheep, and if you lose one, you know your opponent's probably there. So that should tell Blue that Frankie, our player who's playing as the Malians, is likely set up here. Uh, Frankie, I don't actually know too much about. Um, Frankie is lower rank, though, so just above the 2k mark. So Frankie might be a bit more fresh to the 2k plus level. Um, but I've, I've heard some things about Frankie... My scouts tell me Frankie really likes monks. I really like some wacky play. And if you've seen the title and the thumbnail, you probably already know that things are going to be a little bit crazy here. So uh, dock location is a big thing here on Nomad as well. You've got the dock on the very right side here for Frankie. Malians are super smooth here. All, with all the discounts on your wood buildings, you just save so much wood to add to fishing ships. One of the smoothest starts for Nomad in the game and tc spot was really well done uh frankie now bringing in yet another boar even some quick walling skills here just to protect the villager a bit more and we see frankie also scouting with the sheep so you, you want to find the opponent's tc with sheep but then you also want to find the opponent's dog uh, no scouting down here yet for frankie but sometimes a house on a shoreline will make you think your opponent has docked there so if Frankie were to assume that the opponent's dock is next to the house, uh, for example, we might see a house come up here for red at some point. It, it might feel natural, but, you know, if that happens, even if you assume, uh, like, incorrectly, you're still kind of in the same area as the fish. So that's actually good scouting intel for Frankie to work off of. Also looks like a sheep was lost here. So, um, you know, big basics on Nomad. Scouting with the sheep looking for dock positions, looking for TC spots. Now, Nomad is one of the best maps for unique unit play. And the reason for that is, with good TC spots, you are going to be... Uh, your mining and your choppage, which is not the way to say it, the, the, the wood. <laughs> but choppage is really fun. Um, so, you know, we'll stick with that for this game. The mining and the choppage is safe. Right, so uh, let's say you want to go fast castle. You need wood, obviously. You've got wood. You need uh, gold. Gold is obviously a bit far away, but the stone's right there. And so you're basically protecting like two crucial resources that you wouldn't be able to protect if it was a normal map and your TC was spawned uh, like here where the relic is, right? So feudal age aggression is normally just going to run right into a town center, at least if the players really know what they're doing. And the players do know what they're doing here, clearly, by their level. A uh, blue did... Ooh. No, red, don't find the sheep. Are you crazy? That's actually really wild. Oh, wait, no, blue actually saw it. Okay. I think it was just waypoints, but yeah. So you actually saw the dock foundation there if you're blue. And then lost the sheep, so that gives you an indicator of where the opponent's fish is. There also was a sheep loss here from red, so red knows what's up to... 
But yeah, the other thing which makes a uh, unique unit play a bit more viable is with fishing ships, you have more food income. And so you are in a really good position to have food to go castleage and then make whatever unit you want to make, right? And Koreans are known as one of the better unique unit saves on this map. Uh, especially because like, if you lose your fishing ships, your war wagon only costs wood and only costs gold. So that's really nice. So I think Ween is going to be in a pretty good spot. And it seems like Fast Castle is the plan. Now for Red, Red recognizing exactly where the fish is. Red's going with the double dock strat and is going to send the fires immediately over here. Blue most likely will spend most of that wood that's in bank for the uh, or, or on the um, blacksmith and market. So I wasn't sure, you know, my mood and my focus coming into this cast, to be honest with you guys, but I'm feeling very, very analytical. Not that I normally don't break things down for you guys, but I hope you guys have enjoyed the, the bonus this year. It's, it's really tricky um, and it's impossible to do this, but like I strive to have a cast that will appeal to people who know what they're talking about, right? But then also people who don't, right? So it's like, how do I do that? It's hard to do that. It's almost impossible to do that. So I'm trying to find that middle ground here. I don't want someone who's been around for six years to have to hear the same bonuses explained over and over again, but try and give some some depth of knowledge too on, on certain things. And, and right now, like, Blue's going to know that it's fire galley pressure from the opponent. The second dock's an indicator of that. The feudal age time is an indicator of that. And Koreans are always a little bit awkward here because they can't make demos, which is really helpful in fire ship wars. But this little uh, area of here for blue is quite nice. And Frankie's maybe been focused a little bit too much on land decisions because the first fire ship went way over here. I don't know why. Yeah, so that, I mean, that that's not perfect play here from Frankie, but trust me, this none of this is going to be perfect. It's just really high level stuff. Gives Blue more time with those fishing ships. Gives Blue more time to recover on water. Blue has not gone to stone, which is surprising to me. You know your opponent's close. You have some outposts now to confirm that too. You're also kind of cramped here for your Blue. It feels like a really good situation to be aggressive. But it could just be Fast Castle in the water. And if you're ever going to pick a strat for Nomad, Dock and Dark Age... Go double dock fast castle into the work alley upgrade. Go kill their fish. It's just so strong. So that I know I I've seen blue around a lot. Blue plays a lot of like Arabia, I think. Not sure the experience level on Nomad, but that that could be part of it, right? It's like you do this and you're it's not going to be bad for you. And it could be bad for you on lands, and that seems to be what Frankie's focusing on. Here goes Frankie, a little desperate to kill some fishing ships, I'm sure, because the early fire galley numbers were there. War galley upgrade is in queue for blue, behind a fire galley, so that's a little awkward, but it should come. I think Frankie is expecting aggression. We have lots of walls here to kind of box blue out. We're not seeing the aggression yet. We do see blue now headed to stone, though, so... Stone mining should come in pretty fast and furious with the Koreans. We're now going to send these fires this way. Fishing ships for red. Some of them still spread over here. Actually, that's all of them. There's just four. And uh, we're going to hear a whole lot more dinging for the time being. Because you always hear dings on water maps. If I click a dock, there's a ding. If I click a ship, there's a ding. The Capture Age team who makes this program. And we're going to update my version soon, by the way. We'll have some cool stats on this. If you ever have stats that you really want to see, maybe leave a comment about it. I can work with them on it, potentially. But they literally offer. They listen, people. They're like, T90, do you want it to be less dinging? Would you like less ding? For the time being, I'm fine with the dings. It's just after 10 years, you can't help but notice there's lots of dings. Um, you know, fishing ships for blue still alive, but same for red. Blue does have more of them, which I guess is a plus. And blue is now dropping a TC. Now, like we said before, it's like you focus a lot on water. Now don't have a lot of space. And it was good on blue to think I need a castle. But red? 
actually walks forward here to drop this castle. Very risky, actually, not having a lot of vision. But from what I've heard, Red is the underdog here. And I've also been told that Red goes for some wacky stuff and that Red really likes monks. The so Red walks in. We'll steal that relic. We'll finish this castle. This castle will then give vision on the fact that Blue's building a castle here. And that's going to be a villager deleted there. And then we also have... So that's a villager down for Blue. And also a villager here got shot down by the castle. So it'll be a castle war for now. These villagers looking for a job somewhere. These villagers may be headed home where we have a siege workshop as well. All right, so little little nomad tip for you here. Listen, th this map is really tricky, right? Choke points and demos are your friend. Even if you're not like really fully invested in water anymore, just my tip, it might not save red here, but just like have a demo there. Just wait. Just play the lazy man's game on nomad. Trust me, you're going to have people run in with fire ships and they're going to take way too many hits. That's just my tip of the day for you. So remember earlier I talked about how good the war wagon can be because the war wagon only costs wood and gold here. We are going to see some war wagons from blue. A villager was converted by red and the villager is now upset at the castle being there. So the villager is boxing that down. Aggressive stuff. There's the water aspect as well. I think red is feeling the need to do damage because the fish is going to go down. So now there's not a lot of food eco. The, the problem with the Gabetto here, they're low HP. So if they get hit by TC fire or castle fire or war wagons, they're going to go down pretty quick. But they're strong. They do a lot of damage. These ladies throw some crazy sharp weapons here. I actually forget the name of the weapon. The weapon may even be a Gabetto. Someone in the comments can let me know. Uh, for example, a Shotel Warrior a couple weeks ago, I said, what type of weapon is that? And then a bunch of people in my Twitch chat were like, that's a Shotel, you idiot. So, yeah, that's why I'm... I, I assume that is the, describing the weapon, but, but watch it not be at this point. Might be describing the Warrior. Either way, they have surprising accuracy with their twirls. And there is a way to move around with the Gabetto in a way that is a little bit you know, faster for them, a little bit safer. And it's the underutilized, but always appreciated siege tower. So seven Gabettos go into the siege tower. This is not the start of a really bad joke where they end up at a bar or something, but and Blue a little bit concerned by this. And Blue, it's, it's like, thank God I'm Koreans. And thank God I have our tower upgrade for free is concerned about that, and also there's a lot of monks. You can't get anywhere near those monks with the war wagons right now. And the big Gabetto, excuse me, come in. They hop out of the tower. They hop into the tower. They hop out of the tower. They hop into the tower. They hop out of the tower. They hop into the tower. And guess what happens next, guys? You get, you get Any guesses? No, you got it wrong. They're rolling away. <laughs> They're rolling away. That's an excellent use, an excellent shield and transportation method for the Gabetto. And Blue's like the favorite player. Blue's won water, which is so nice. Blue's got the nice little score lead. And Blue's got to be like, what in the world here? If this tower would have come up here and a little bit earlier for Blue, this TC would have never gone down. The Gabetto just wheel over here. Blue is, is just looking at so much. I think it's looking at water out of the tower. Kill villagers. Into the tower. Whoop. Uh, that, that lady didn't make it back. Nope. Yep, she did. She did. Sorry. I actually wonder if they heal in there. Hold on. Let's do a test. That's actually rather important, right? Okay, so. Because. Okay, so that. She goes down to 2 HP. Okay, that's just important for us to know. Jumped right back in the tower. Don't ask me, like, how they're getting in there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But good eco damage. Now, behind this, there's very little actual food income here for Frankie. And Frankie is just kind of using the market in, in some ways. Now, usually you want fish. Normally you want farms. But Frankie doesn't have time for that because Frankie is focused on everything here. Frankie spent 661 gold to just buy the food, which for all in strategies we've seen so many times over the past couple years, especially. So far, the monks haven't even played a role. It's just solely the siege tower. Out of the tower, bam, into the tower. 
Um, hold on. Her, where's her HP? It's definitely gone up, guys. It, it definitely healed. I know the monks might have played a role there, but... There's another... I guess a new Gabetto ran into the castle fire. That's unlucky there for Blue not to get that kill. And Blue seems completely shell-shocked right now. Like, what on earth is this? And you might be thinking the same. This is epic from Frankie. The underdog coming in here with some style. And his towers continue to go up here for Blue. Red continues to look for ways to take them down. Now, Redemption had come in a long time ago, so that monk can actually convert the siege. And having been in a similar spot before, like, against heavy pressures, is extremely common in tournaments. I don't actually... I believe this must have been some type of tournament, right? Because there was... Um, this is a nine villager start. But, like... I've been on the other end of a lot of aggressive strategies from underdogs, and it's just not a good feeling, right? It's not a good feeling at all. Monks converting your crap's not fun. TC's going down is not fun. And the siege towers are a real threat. Like, you shouldn't really be able to go close to all of this. Out of the tower, boom, getting a couple kills. Back into the tower, Manganel's rolling over this way. Market's now deleted from blue. Blue doesn't want to give Red a market, which is kind of funny, because Red definitely has one back at home. Out of the tower. Monks underneath the tower. The towers now are shooting down the monks. A little ambitious here from Red, maybe. But again, it's just what Red's thinking here. Is Red is just... I gotta kill. I gotta be aggressive here. And Red has taken the score lead, at least. Has killed quite a lot recently. Blue used to have so many town centers here. It's not there anymore. And what I love is, like, if Blue isn't paying attention, the Siege Tower is actually taking the shots from the towers. Siege Tower, insane. Look at the Pierce Armor. 100 Pierce Armor. <laughs> like, um, in a, in a high-level tournament the other day, um, we had... I think it was Doubt Nikov. Uh, Hardy's going to hate me for, for having to put this in. This would have been maybe a week or two ago by the time of upload, but... Uh, a player made a siege tower and tossed it into a fight. And I was saying while I was casting, I actually think tossing siege towers into fights, not even using them as a transportation method, I actually think it's a good strat. It soaks up a lot of shots. And it's much faster than a ram. And thus easier to, you know, move around, bring back and repair. Like, Red is repairing the tower. Knows how important that tower is. Here come the war wagons, and, uh, well, Blue has been trying to survive this whole time. Has had the eco lead this whole time, has had eight fishing ships, has produced way more villagers, but unfortunately has also lost quite a few. And now Blue's gonna see Imp. And Blue is probably like, huh? Out of the tower, back into the siege tower here from Frankie. Monks and siege still back here, though obviously guard tower is still something that's strong. Blue says, how? How? Like, how is this possible? What is this? Now, you can use siege towers to send them over walls, but you, then you can't get back. So, yeah, Frankie says, I don't want to go over. I want to go through with this tower. Little choo-choo action. Now, this kind of hurts for Frankie. Frankie's castle has been getting shot by this castle this whole time with Bodkin Arrow. And Frankie wants to go up for treps. And Frankie doesn't have another castle, so Frankie's just got that trep now. And that is something that I think Frankie did not think of. So this gives Blue a chance, especially if Blue can find an answer to this trebuchet. You can see Red just not giving it up. Red's so worried right now, and now it's it's Mom's sweaty spaghetti ready here. Uh, not the lyrics, of course, but we we just we we don't want to get copyright strike here. Is it copyright struck? If you have been striked, I don't know. Siege Tower is the MVP still. Blue's not even looking at this. So that tower is still just taking all that arrow fire. And Red's going to lose his castle. <laughs> and Red is down to 32 eco. And Frankie fans are like, no! <laughs> Frankie, what are you doing? You don't have a lot of eco here. Frankie's eco is a disaster right now. But Blue is still cornered. And there's 10 Gabettos here. And there's still that Treb. That Treb, obviously, the most important thing. This Treb is really the only thing that has benefited, that Red has benefited from in the Imperial Age. Actually, that's not true. Sorry, the Monks can get more range if the upgrades come in. That would be a big deal. 
Gabetto's out of the tower, here to protect the siege. Gabetto's do a lot of damage still. Back into the tower. War wagons are confused. Rams have now been clicked in. Blue clearly worried because of the how. How did you do this? The confusion. Because Blue's like, how'd you get food? I killed your fish. How did you get food? It makes no sense. Again, maybe a little best of three here. Maybe this is game number one. Uh, I, I do not have the context there. I apologize, but really solid players. That's the eco right there that Red's working with. That. That and the market, which without the market, many games would be played entirely differently, but especially this one. Look at him. Look at the zooming. And now the monks will have that 12 range we talked about. So, like, what can Blue do to get out of this situation? So, Blue needs to get take care of the monks. Take care of the monks first and foremost. You then need to take care of the trap. Now, anything you're going to use to go in there with can get converted. And that really hurts. So, actually, ideally, you actually have some light cap here. Blue, I, there, there's another thing, too, that I think Blue could have done. It's, it's too little too late. I think in earlier moments, when the pressure was less severe, transporting away would have been Blue's friend. Blue is just giving so much power to these walls. Breaking down the wall, running away, escaping. We actually have Yup Siong now for Blue. That is to give towers more range. And that tech is going to come in after every single tower has been taken out. Frankie really loves this siege tower. Repairing the tower. It's been the same tower all game. It has been repaired multiple times. And monks, they find some more wagons over here. And then the Gabetto are wheeling themselves over. The siege tower is somehow faster than this wagon with two horses on front. In the front. And massive wheels. Don't ask me how that works. Just Age of Empires things. And the monks pay off. Get some conversions. And Blue taps out. And says, GG, man. What crazy strats are this? And then, obviously, drops the 11, which is the laugh taunt. And I imagine Blue was not laughing. And might not be laughing when he sees the upload. So, sorry about that one, Blue. But, man, what a game. <laughs> I just need to go back, like... Just look at the amount on food for Frankie throughout this. Let's see. Zero. Okay, makes sense. Zero. Okay, makes sense. Zero. Five. What? What is that? Is that berries? Yeah, there we go. We got him. And then they were. he was never on food again. <laughs> I mean, I'm really impressed with Red's ability to focus on the push. And it's really hard. Like... It probably almost felt like this whole time that Blue had worse micro or something and worse unit control. But Blue is focusing on adding fishing ships and patrolling some of the ships around to make sure the opponent doesn't redock and adding more TCs and adding farms and getting eco upgrades. Like, there's just other aspects you focus on. And that's what's beautiful about the game is you put your focus into eco. There's a payoff as long as you don't die to the player who is crappy eco and is buying lots of pressure, right? Um... Yeah, I think Blue, you know, is going to learn some lessons from this. I think the initial tower, right? Like, you know, Blue can see this Siege Workshop. Guard Tower needs to be up the second that Siege Workshop goes up, right? Right here. Boom. Guard Tower here. This TC never goes down. Where does Red shift to? Over here? Sure. Well, then you build another tower. Like, these TC, the towers actually lost Blue the game. Because the positions were horrible. I would say. Um, so, you know, Ween, if you wanted any tips from that, that's what I would say. Well played from Red, though. Take nothing away from him. Um, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face or a siege tower just rolls right up into their business. Uh, not a fun time to be up against that and very easy to make poor decisions when it comes your way. Uh, let's look at Red's collected here to end the game. Blue collected more. No surprise. Red collected way more gold, though. Also no surprise. Total villager stat would be really fun. There's the KD for you. What about this one? Yeah, that's a brutal one. 74 total villagers against 43 total villagers. So a lot of that food for blue went into villagers that eventually just died and were very inefficient. And red wasn't producing as many villagers, so saved a lot of food. Obviously then bought enough food to go imp and... 
mean, red just got really good value from all the units. Whoops. The siege tower was really strong. I just got a new keyboard. I keep bumping buttons. Um, the siege tower got amazing value. The I rarely saw monks go down. Rarely saw villagers go down. It's just like every unit that red had was very, very effective. So, guys, um, hope you enjoyed this cast. Thank you again for the support. I uh, recorded this one over my 12-hour session, which I spent time on for YouTube videos. So if you're watching this around the time of upload, I am taking a break with family and uh, I'm probably freezing and very cold and, and hopefully reading a Calvin and Hobbes book next to a fire right now. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but um, I appreciate you guys. I want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and thanks for the consistent support in the channel. Uh, as always, my thank you will be consistent effort and support uh, or not support sorry uh, uploads with really good casts so um hope you enjoyed the variety of this one and i'll see you guys around on the next one thank you for the support see ya